everybody, my name is Brandon and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another Spooky Scott Tober video. This is the final Spooky Scott Tober video of this year. So I don't have any more stories to tell after this one. Hopefully no more occur to me that I have to tell, but it was a blast doing this with you all. And I have enjoyed letting you all get a brief look into the scary stuff that has happened in my life. Um, and I hope that you have enjoyed the stories. Again, these are all absolutely true and have either happened to me or someone that I know or love. And I am just mind blown that there are already eight of these. I don't think that I'll have any more. I hope, I really hope I don't have any more soon, but we will see. If I do, I will make sure to upload a video. But before I get into this final video, leave a comment down below which story was your favorite and why. Obviously, after listening to this one as well, this one is probably the scariest of all of the stories, and I saved it for last, obviously for a reason, because it's the closest to Halloween. So I wanted to get you in the mood for Halloween with my scariest story that has occurred to me. This story happened when I was commuting to school my junior year of college to help my mom with my siblings. I'm just gonna hop into the video because I think the title says it all. The Murderous Hitchhiker. In 2016, I was 21, a junior in college. This year, my single mom asked if I would stay home and commute to my university every day so I could help her with things around the house and look after my younger siblings when I could. Despite my university being an hour's drive away, I agreed to help her. A few months into the college commuting, I had a paper to write for one of my major classes. As an English major, it was a lengthy paper, 12 pages if I remember correctly, so I called my mom and let her know that I was going to stay at the library on campus until I finished the paper. I always seemed to work better in the library, and I didn't want to risk driving home and getting tired from the drive before I had the chance to complete my homework. I write until about 2.30 a.m. I finish, pack up my things, and then start heading home. The college that I attended was in a pretty big city, but after driving 30 minutes in the direction of my hometown, you experience the epitome of the rural south. Around 3 a.m., I get off the highway and spot a white truck on the side of the road with the hood propped open. I start to slow down to inspect the scene, and I see a man and a woman outside of their car looking me right in the eyes. The man smiles and waves for me to pull over and help. Honestly, I considered it. Call it my southern chivalrous roots, but I remind myself that I am the farthest from a mechanic and I actually know next to nothing about cars. Therefore, I kept driving to the stop sign at the end of the exit. I'm turning right, so I look to make sure there's nothing coming from my left before making the turn. As I start to ease up on the brake to begin turning, I caught out of the corner of my eye the man from before. His face, without the smile, seems far more sinister, and he reaches for the handle of my car door. I floor the gas, my tires screeching as I made the turn. In my rear view, I can see him waving his hands in the air and shouting at me, but I made it out. Honestly, I felt bad for not stopping to help, and I had to keep telling myself that I wouldn't have been able to help anyway. My heart was racing, but there was nothing else to worry about, right? Wrong. I drove for about 10 more minutes, meaning I was 20 minutes from home. Ever since I took the exit, there was nothing but farms and forests, which was to be expected until I drove into my small town that housed a welcome sign 18 minutes from where I was. My nerves had already calmed about the couple in the truck, and I put on a podcast to distract me from the torture of my own thoughts. The road was empty and had been since I turned onto it. However, at one point, I look back and see headlights in my rearview mirror. The first thing that came to my mind was the white truck from before, but I told myself that I was just being paranoid. Their car was on the side of the road. There's no way they got help at 3 a.m. and decided to come hunt me down. I was convinced that this was a completely different vehicle until it started to ride my ass. The vehicle behind me was basically bumper to bumper with my car. My heart starts to hammer it in my chest, and I try slowing down so as to let it pass me. It didn't. I tried to speed up so as to lose it. I didn't. In fact, they remained on my back bumper no matter what I did. Now, about 15 minutes from my hometown, I decided that I needed to lose the vehicle before I made it home. So I make a right turn onto a side road and the vehicle follows me. I was now able to see in my rear view after making the turn that it was indeed a white truck. 
The hairs all over my body stood on end and I felt like I couldn't catch a good breath of air. Maybe it's just another coincidence, I thought. So a few miles down the road, I make a left turn onto another side road. The truck still follows me. I turn left on yet another side road a few miles down and so did they. Lastly, I made another right which led back to the main road that we were on before and the truck follows suit. This is the first time I've ever had an encounter where I would need to call the police, but I didn't know if it would be something that the police would be able to help with. How would I prove that they were following me? They may just chalk it up to coincidence, so I did the next best thing. I called my mom. She answered on the third ring, obviously groggy from sleep. I told her what was going on, and she and one of my other brothers, 19, decided to drive in my direction and hopefully scare the truck off with another car being on the road. Now that I was 10 minutes from home, I could expect to drive for five more minutes before they arrived. This was the longest five minutes of my life and I just tried to make sure that I was hyper aware at all times so the truck wouldn't try ramming me from behind to wreck my car. Soon I see headlights coming in my direction. My mom called me back and told me they saw me and they were trying to make a U-turn. Before I knew it, they were right behind the white truck. And at the next turn, the truck turned right onto a side road. I half expected it to turn back onto our road and start following my family in their car, but it didn't. It actually parked on the side of the road where they turned, and both my brother's car and mine sped off into the distance. We made it home, and I was now aware of how much the adrenaline had taken out of me, and I head straight to bed. I wish I could say that was the end of the story. The next night, I had an event for my scholarship program that I helped create. It didn't end until 10 p.m. and I still needed to help with cleanup, which took about an hour. As I was cleaning, I told my friends about what had happened the night before and they were so freaked out. They started to tell me creepy stories that happened to them as well and before we knew it, it was 11 p.m. and we were finished with cleaning but not finished with our conversation. So, we all headed to the library to continue talking about these creepy experiences. When we all ran out of our own stories, we turned to the internet to read scary folk tales. We had so much fun and we laughed all night over our own reactions to these frightening tales. And it was honestly one of the best nights of my college career. Who would have thought that it would end up being the most frightening night of my life? It was about 2 a.m. when we all said our goodbyes and I started to drive back home for the night. I was nervous and all of the fun I had made me forget about the events of last night until I sat behind the wheel of my car again. I was dreading taking the exit off the highway for 30 minutes, but as I got off the exit, it was clear. I let out a sigh of relief. My nerves start to ease as I make it closer and closer to my home. As I start to approach the road that the white truck pulled off of the night before, I see something in the middle of the road. At first, I thought it was an animal, but as I started to get closer, I could see that it was a man in the middle of the road. He was standing on the opposite side, but when he sees my car coming closer, he lifts his hands and starts waving them to flag me down. He's covered in blood, but what's even more terrifying is that I've seen him before. Last night. Everything goes into slow motion. He starts walking toward my car, which is speeding it down the road. His hands are still waving. My eyes start looking for any explanation. The car, the girl, someone following him. Nothing. Before I know it, my foot floors the gas pedal. It honestly felt as if someone else had taken over my body because I still couldn't process what I was seeing. As I passed him, he hurled himself toward the side of my car, but luckily I swerved to miss him. I pulled out my phone and called 911. I told them everything that had happened from both that night and the night before and right after. I called my mom again. She stayed on the phone with me until I made it home safely, but I couldn't sleep. I stayed up watching TV until 8 a.m., and that's when I saw the news broadcast. Apparently, the man and woman from the white truck were luring people into their murderous scheme. One man gave them a ride, and the reporter said that the suspects must have started to get violent with the man at the stop sign. The victim pulled his gun out of the glove compartment and shot the woman in the head, killing her instantly. There was then a struggle, and the male suspect gained control of the gun and shot the driver twice in the chest and once in the head. Officers were not able to locate the male suspect or the murder weapon. 
I couldn't sleep for nights, and sometimes my mind is still able to convince me that the man will one day find me again and do what he meant to do twice before. So that is it for my scariest story, The Murderous Hitchhiker. I hope you all enjoyed it. It is so, so terrifying. And when I tell people that story, they don't believe that it actually happened. And that's because it didn't. (laughs) Well, not entirely, at least. So trick or treat, more like trick. So I decided to make this last video a little more... mm, uh, fantasize I guess a little more like dramatic um this did happen to me this event however the man that I saw in the road was not covered in blood in fact he was wearing a white wife beater and blue jeans and like work boots and the first night everything that happened was absolutely true the second night again everything that happened up to when I saw the guy was completely true um However, he was not covered in blood, and the news story was not true. But I do still have nightmares about that guy that was approaching my car, waving my hands, and trying to open the door. I don't know if it's the same guy as the night before, but it was just too weird of a coincidence that it would happen two nights in a row that I obviously, like, that just makes sense that they have to be related. Um, And I just kind of pieced the rest together with my incredible imagination and my love for horror um so i wanted to give you guys a real scare with this video but again not entirely true but the parts that i told you were true are definitely 100 percent true it's just it's just no one died no not that i know of at least and no one was covered in blood those are the only two things that were false All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video and this series on my channel. I look forward to making more videos for you soon. Thank you all for the love and support for this month. I have really appreciated it so much. Thank you for all the birthday love as well. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also hit the notification bell so you are notified every time I post a new video. My name is Brandon and I'll see you all next time. Bye.